Hey everybody, it is four o'clock and I am excited to be kicking off our first Startaloo Bootcamp session. Uh, this is super exciting for me. I hope everybody is able to get on okay and uh, you know, please use the chat feature on, um, on the bottom here on the Zoom. If you have any questions, just feel free to, to shoot them over. Uh, for people who don't know me, my name is Anthony Bonavoglia. Uh, I am an orthodontist in New York. And I'm the founder of Startaloo, which is a sort of a multi-purpose program that is used for presentations. We use it for follow-up, and we also have a pretty robust data section to it. And I am so excited to be doing this. I have been wanting to do this for a while now, um, and I guess it took complete shutdown and pandemic to actually do this. So this is one of the things on on my bucket list to do. And the reason I'm so excited about this is. Uh, I have created Startaloo, honestly, for my own practice, if I'm being, you know, kind of honest about it. I was looking for a way of being more competitive and a way to grow my practice. And, you know, when we decided we were going to actually make this available for other practices, there's so much that I've done with this system over the last couple of years, and I just want to share it. And just, you know, I feel like it's just time to be able to show people um, you know, what I've been up to and, and how it's helped me grow my practice since I've been using this almost, I think we looked at the numbers about 35% um, growth since starting to use this just a couple of years ago. So this is very, this stuff works that I'm going to show you. Um, full disclosure, I am not a consultant, um, you know, so there's a lot of questions that you may have and there are people who are better to answer that than I am. I'm just going to show you what we're doing in our office and kind of how how I look at things and look at it through the lens of the software. So I am going to, I put together a little um, presentation here to kick things off. And I'm gonna go ahead and start this. And you know, I, I started this, I was trying to think of what subject do I wanna start with here. And you know, I decided to start using one that's a little bit almost obscure, um, but you know, it's something that's been very impactful in my, in my office and trying to get the idea of, you know, what could I show people um, that is a little outside the box, what, what's been very effective for me in my office, and um, start getting you to think about things just a little bit differently. So I just we decided to start off with using insurance data. Um, very easy to do and you know, these sessions, we want to try to keep them to about 20 minutes. So I know we're all busy. We get a lot of things. There's a lot of you know, online education going on right now. And I don't want to, um, you know, I want to just give you short little clips, things that we can just look at and maybe start thinking about things a little differently. The goal here is when we get back out, we want to be ready and rolling. We want to, if, we, if there's anything we can do now, let's do it now so that when we get back and we're seeing patients and we're all working 90 hours a week, um, you know, we're not having to worry about putting systems into place when we could have been doing it all along. So, you know, this is why um, we started this Startaloo boot camp, you know, and what we want to do is I want people to come out of this and have their office stronger than ever. And one of the things that always, uh, it always challenges me is I love going to conferences. I love learning new things, but, you know, there's always this connection that you can learn something, but if you're not putting it into action, it just doesn't really mean much. And I am a huge Office fan. I am a, I've seen every single episode like five times. Um, as a matter of fact, I try to watch it every day right now because I feel like it's like my little bit of normalcy. Um, and I feel like this quote, it's funny, I actually, I, I was doing a lecture for another, uh, another um, conference and I had this quote in, and this was before the Corona shutdown. And man, if this wasn't um, more appropriate now than then, I don't know what is, you know, and we, I don't think we realized we were in the good old days, um, you know, before, but I am very optimistic. I think we're still going to be in the good old days. I think we're going to come out of this. Uh, we're going to be better uh, business owners. You know, people are starting to ask questions that they didn't ask before. And I think um, I, I'm hopeful that all of us are going to come out of this stronger. You know, so again, my, my goal is just to get people thinking, you know, maybe think about things a little bit differently. My journey with being a part of Startaloo has uh, opened up my eyes to a couple of other different worlds out there. One of, 
anybody who's talked to me, one of my favorite things to do is to take things from other industries and bring them into the orthodontic industry because I feel like, you know, sometimes we think it has to be ortho specific, but you know, when you look into other industries and see what they're doing, you realize it's applicable in ours. So, you know, that's what I'm hoping maybe with some of the things that we're going to talk about, um, you know, you'll, you'll, it'll maybe just get the wheels turning a bit. So, and again, you know, if we can't turn our insight into action, it's useless. Um, it, it doesn't really do anything for us. So, you know, I don't want to only have these ideas and then people walk away going, yeah, that's cool. I can't do anything with it. I would like to us to be able to turn that straight into an action item that we can accomplish in a short period of time. Um, and then, you know, we're ready to roll once we open up our doors. So, you know, I think this quote kind of sums it all, right? Knowledge and action combined can win over any, any ad, uh, adversity known to man. I mean, if we've ever had an adversity, uh, we're living through it right now. But I think we can think about that from the, the lens of our practice as well. Um, you know, we put knowledge together with action, and uh, that's how we're going to overcome any of the challenges that are on their way. So I, I'm going to start off with this idea of geofencing, geofencing marketing. I, I'm sure a lot of you, I'm assuming some of you have maybe done this or are aware of how it works. And I am not a geofencing expert. I mean, in my office, we hire another company that does this for us. Um, our Startaloo does not do this. But um, for the context of this conversation, it's important that we're all on the same page and how this works. And, you know, for anybody who's not familiar with it, you know, it's the idea that the uh, the technology knows when a person moves in or walks into a building, it basically tags them and then it feeds them ads on their phone. You guys have probably had this and sometimes it can be a bit annoying, but it is effective. You know, if you walk into a Home Depot and then you go home, all of a sudden you're getting an ad for wood, right? And it's because you walked into that building and Home Depot paid a, a company to geofence that building and now your phone, they track that you walked into that building and when you left, they know you were in Home Depot looking for something. And so now you're being fed ads that are targeted towards you. And, you know, so I just put this little um, example together just to illustrate, you know, how this works. You've got somebody who's about to walk into a building and, you know, they have some sort of geofencing campaign going on in that location. And I mean, it doesn't have to be one building, it can be an area uh, and, you know, different companies have different ways of doing this. And when you walk out, now you're being fed that ad. So, you know, if you're geofenced, um, you know, a building for your orthodontic practice, when somebody goes in that building and they walk out, now they're gonna start being fed um, ads for your practice. And so again, it's just very effective because you can target your audience. And so, you know, in theory, you're going to get a higher return on those marketing dollars because rather than just mass targeting everyone, you're actually being very focused. And you know, the, the saying is if you're marketing to everyone, you'll get no one. And so I think that's very true. And so, you know, the, the idea that, that I'd like everybody to think about is qualified leads, right? What does geofencing do? It's qualifying your lead because I'm not going to advertise in, you know, let's say a nail salon, uh, if I don't feel like the people who walk into nail salons are a good audience for my practice. So, you know, I, I'm, you know, orthodontists probably aren't going to geofence a geriatric home. I think that would be probably not money well spent. So, you know, the idea is you're trying to get qualified leads, but you know, the question is, can we get even better um, can we use data to qualify these leads at a higher level? Because again, when we come out of this, this shutdown, you know, we're going to have to do some level of marketing. I think everybody should be aware of that. Um, you know, patients, if, if you're having a steady, steady flow of patients coming in, there's going to be a bit of a, a, a drag. And, um, and I think, you know, we need to think about marketing, but again, we need to be focused on where are we spending our marketing dollars? We've got to be very, um, concerned about the money that we're spending. So, you know, here's a little example, um, you know, two different marketing campaigns, you know, one I, I marketed, I got 60 new patients exam, exams, you know, which I think most of us would be very happy if 60 new patient exams came in from any marketing endeavor. 
um, but only five of them started, right? And so you figure $5,000 average uh, fee, and you know we got we made $25,000 from that that marketing campaign. The other one we got three, but we only spent a thousand bucks, right? So by you know we we got three new patient exams and one started. You know, so how much did we spend on this marketing campaign on the first one? We got 60 new patient exams, five of them started, and it cost us $15,000, right? On the second one here, we only had three people come in, which is not great. None of us would be happy probably if you, you know, if you did a marketing campaign and only three people showed up, only one started, but it only cost you a thousand bucks, right? So maybe this is like your, you know, your, you do it at a sports team or something like that. So you know, if you're looking at your ROI, let's compare the ROI between the two. You know, the first one, you spent 15,000, you made 25,000, you know, it's a 1.33 times ROI uh, multiplier. On the second one, we only spent a thousand, we made 5,000, that's a five times ROI. So dollar for dollar, this, the one where we only had three people come in, um, you know, really ended up being the better marketing decision. Now you may say, well, I really, you know, I really want to get the, the higher volume. Um, but, you know, is that really good for your practice? If you're seeing consistent number of patients, you know, having a high volume of new patient exams is actually going to start crowding out your more qualified patients, the ones where maybe the dentist is referring to you. Um, you know, it may not be, that may not be a large number, but you want to make sure that you can get those patients uh, in and seated. And if you're flooding your practice with these patients that aren't starting, you know, it's going to be that much harder uh, to get the ones that are starting scheduled. So it's even beyond the ROI, it can have some downstream effects as well. Well, what if we could get the same multiplier for the 60 new patient exams, right? Now, what cost you $15,000 makes you $75,000. And so this idea of marketing a lot of us are very focused on how many new patient exams did that marketing get me, but we lose sight of what was the bottom line? What did I actually get from that? And part of that is because it's hard to track that data. You know, a lot of it is retroactive. I got to go in, I got to you know, keep track of spreadsheets. And so, you know, what, what one of the th things that we designed Startaloo for was to make sure that, you know, we didn't have to retroactively um, keep track of data. So, you know, I want to just think, I wanted to touch on this because a lot of, if you're going to, you know, if we follow through these sessions and we talk about marketing, for me, marketing is all about highly targeted marketing. I, I don't want to hear that, you know, I spent this much money and I've got this number of new patient exams or new patient phone calls. I want to know bottom line, how much did that convert? And if it's not converting at a high level, you're just filling my chair with patients that are unqualified, ones that aren't going to start that's not an effective use of marketing dollars. And I, I really can't afford that in my practice because my practice is fairly busy and I need to have the chairs for patients who are gonna start. So that's what I wanna show you today. And, and you know, kind of putting this together, I wanna show you how you can use insurance information to geofence areas to get these high qualified patients into your practice, which should have a high tendency to convert. So I'm gonna switch out of the presentation here and I'm gonna go into, uh, this is our Sandbox account, okay? So we designed this um, for anybody who wants to go on it. it we're gonna give you, uh, for everybody who participated here and, um, and listened, you're gonna get a email, and in the email, there's going to be a, um, a document that is gonna show you how you can log into our Sandbox account and you can go in and play with the data and play with the program. And you know, I'm hoping you'll see how, when you start thinking about things a little differently, uh, you know, how you can really start getting information that you'll be able to use to, um, to really boost your practice. So this is a sandbox account. Like I said, you'll be able to go in and we're gonna have all the instructions on our Facebook on how you can do this. But I'm gonna show you how we market in my practice. So I'm gonna go into this upper right hand corner. This is what we call our Startalytics. And I'm gonna click that. And like I said, you'll all be able to do this and we've got it all written out for you. And uh, because this is a sandbox account, all this data, this is not real data, this is just play data. Uh, I'm gonna, and this is in the instructions, we're gonna go into a custom date range because I wanna get a lot of patients on, on the information here. So we're gonna go way back, we'll just go a couple of years. 
And what we're going to do is we're going to go into our report card. So we created this idea of a report card because, you know, my, my daughter, my daughter would come home from school and she has a report card and, you know, she's all excited because she got an A and, you know, we're all excited about it. And then, you know, no, no parent just looks at the top line and says, Oh, you got an A. That's great. Everyone goes, okay, let me look at your subject. And we do, we, our practices are still stuck at that top line. I mean, we all talk about our conversion rates, but like, what does it mean? I mean, how do I, how do I strip that information out so that I can see where I'm deficient, where I'm strong? So we put into Startler this concept of a report card so that you can actually start seeing the different areas of strengths and weaknesses. So I'm going to go ahead and generate a report card. And this is real time. You can do this anytime you want. And, um, you know, you can pull your information. And so if we're looking at our report card, here is that top line, right? This is my daughter came home with the A. This is my overall practice conversion rate. Now you may look at this and say it's 56%. Remember, this is a sandbox uh, account. This is a lot of fake data. Um, but as we go down, we have all these different tabs. And right here is the patient insurance tab. So I'm going to select that. And we only put three in because we didn't want it to be too complicated. But here is the insurance plans that this practice has been working with, with patients. And so anything that's green, that means you're above your overall conversion rate. And anything that's red tells you you're below your overall conversion rate. And so we can see Delta Dental is a fairly high converting patient compared to the practice of 56%. It's 4% higher. Now you may say 4%, what does that even matter? Well, if you read this right here, a 1% increase in conversion rate would have had a $78,000 increase in production. So 4% is significant, right? I mean, that's almost you know, over $200,000. So we really would like to get these Delta patients into our practice because we know they're converting at a higher level. Now we've identified qualified patients. So what am I gonna do? I'm gonna go and I'm gonna look at all the employers in my area that offer Delta Dental as their insurance plan for their, de uh, their dental insurance, and I'm going to geofence those companies. So if, you know, I'm an IBM world, if IBM has Delta Dental and they offer that to their employees, I'm gonna geofence and I'm gonna have a very targeted marketing plan that's gonna say, hey, we work with your insurance. Whether you're in network or not, you design the marketing plan with your marketing team, and I'm gonna say, we work with that insurance. And what are you doing? You're attracting qualified patients. So your marketing dollars are being maximized by qualified patients coming into your office. Vice versa, I might look at Cigna and go, man, that's not really doing so well, right? And so the question is, why isn't it doing so well? You know, what, what is it about this Cigna patients that I'm not, uh, that isn't working for us? So I'm gonna go back into my report card. I'm gonna, sorry, I'm gonna go to my, my Startalytics. I'm gonna go to my data controls. And I'm going to select Cigna, and then we're going to run a report card again. So now what we're going to do is we're going to run a report card on just Cigna patients. And here's your homework, okay? And we are going to give a $25 Dunkin', Do Dunkin Donuts gift card, and you can we can email the URL because I don't want to deliver anything. I don't know how everybody feels about that. Uh, I want everyone who's listening, as part of your homework, here's the Cigna patients, I want you to go through these tabs and find out why isn't Cig what, what is it that you would do different in your practice for Cigna patients? There is, there is something in this data set, I'm not gonna tell you what it is, because it's part of your homework, but I want you to go in and see if you could figure out one change you would make to your practice tomorrow if you were looking at this as your report card and said, why aren't these Cigna patients converting and what action item could I do differently to, um, to, to make a change so that I can prove the conversion rate of my patients. So this will be on our Facebook page. Again, it's a little worksheet here. Um, it's, we call it our sandbox worksheet. It's, it's part of the bootcamp. It'll have the login uh, URL, how you're gonna get in, how to go through it. And then at the bottom here, we got the sandbox challenge. And I wanna see who can come up with what you would do different in your practice to, to, uh, based on the data of those Cigna patients. All right. And the other thing I would like is everybody who is, uh, again, we're trying to turn this insight into action. If you are a Startaloo user, uh, what I'm going to ask you to do is to go into your practice setup. It's right up here, right where the insurance button is. And I would like you, this is a great time to do it. You've got time. Start loading your 
insurance plans into here. It takes two seconds. You just go in, you add the insurance plan, and you could call it um, you know, United, and save it, and you're done. And that means that when you go ahead and do a presentation, you're now going to have that insurance loaded in here, and you're gonna to wanna to do this for your in-network and out-of-network plans, because you're gonna to wanna to make a decision, and we're gonna talk about this in another bootcamp session, should I stay in-network or not? Let's make a, a qualitative, data-driven decision on whether staying in-network makes sense or it doesn't make sense, which is gonna be important, I think, over the next year or two uh, when we're making business decisions for our practices. So let me just go here. So your homework for Startler users, I want you to load your insurance plans in. Um, we'll have on our Facebook page exactly how you can do that. Uh, I would like everybody to go on and play with the data, uh, you know, have fun. Remember, it's a sandbox. It means if you're doing something and all of a sudden it looks different, uh, someone's messing around with it. Just like if you go in the sandbox, you know, and you're a kid and you go in your sandbox, you're not in there by yourself usually. Um, so, you know, be, uh, be flexible if all of a sudden something you were playing with kind of disappears on you there. Um, you know, if you're not using Startaloo, you know, there probably are other ways to do this. You could do Excel or Google Sheets. I would recommend you look into that uh, because again, this data, every presentation, every time, I, if there's one thing you get from this is every time you present treatment to a patient, if you're not capturing the data, you're losing opportunity. And it is so powerful to have that data. And I really think it'd be a great idea right now for everybody to start researching um, which dental plans your major employers offer. You know, if you're thinking that this might be a good opportunity for you, uh, you know, I would research that. And you could also research who does this. You know, there's a lot of companies out there that'll do this uh, geofencing on your cap. So I mentioned the challenge. I'd like everybody to, you know, go for it. See who can come up. I'm, I am dying to see what people come up with. And, and again, I'm trying to just, you know, think about things a little differently. Uh, analytical decisions for your practice. So uh, that's it. You know, again, as we're doing the shutdown uh, here, we are still offering our software at no charge for anybody who would like to, um, is interested in that. You know, you can go on to um, startaloo.com, request a demo. We're not um, charging for the, uh, the onboarding or the monthly. You can use it for your virtual consults if you'd like. And next time, we're going to talk about virtual consults. You know, by now, most people have the workflow of the virtual consult figure out. The question is, what are you going to do next? You know, how are we going to, um, how are we going to take this virtual consult to the next level? And, uh, you know, how, what are we going to do with, this, uh, these group of patients that we've gotten that we've never really, you know, for most of us, have never really dealt with before. So we're going to talk about that at our next boot camp session. So with that, I mean, anybody ever has any email uh, questions, they can always email it to me at anthony at startaloo.com. And I am going to see if there's any questions. Oh, all right. Um, yes, there's a question of do, could we rewatch the uh, webinar? And yes, we can. You can rewatch it. I'm going to um, record them, and then they're going to be posted on our Facebook page and also on our um, uh, on our blog post. All right. Well, that is it. Thank you so much, everybody. Uh, like I said, trying to keep it short and sweet. And I look forward. We're going to do another one on Friday. So if you're around four o'clock on Friday, uh, we're going to talk a little bit about what to do with your virtual consults um, next. Now that you have these new patients. And, uh, you know, we're all a little trying to figure out what's, uh, what's the next step here. All right. Thank you.